It's been a year since I officially took the big leap of leaving corporate and starting my own business. And while I have no complaints thus far, there are a few things I wish I knew before I started. So welcome to this video, which is all about some of the business lessons I believe everyone should know before they start their business. Thank you so much to Zero for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a bit more about how Zero can help your small business leverage the power of automation that's helping you grow. Please remember that none of my videos are professional advice. This is only for educational purposes and I'm just telling you what I believe I wish I knew. However, you can have a different experience and let us do a bit of a roll call just so I can see that you guys are actually here and you're active and you're listening and then we'll get straight into my five lessons. All right, for the roll call, if you own a business and use an automatic tool like Xero, comment a blue heart. If you own a business but you just started out so you're still in the learning phase, comment a yellow heart. If you are thinking about starting a business, comment a red heart. And then lastly, for those of you who are not considering starting a business but you're just watching this for your personal gain or to just support me, comment a purple heart. All right, thank you so much guys for participating. I know sometimes these comments may seem like I'm just being silly, but it also helps me understand this channel's demographic. So I want to see how many of you actually have businesses or side hustles, how many of you are just purely working on your main hustle, how many of you are students, etc. So I really appreciate it when you guys do take part. Okay, let me get into the lessons. My name is Nogutle Kumalo and I'm a personal finance creator. Some of the videos I've made include how to buy shares, top 10 affordable cars, how to file your taxes, side hustles, interviews, you name it, I've done it. Note, these videos do not constitute financial advice. My aim is to plant the idea, it's up to you to water it. Lesson number one is start before you leave your job. So the reason I say this is because you need to understand if your business is actually addressing a demand Remember, business isn't all the glitz and glam that it's made out to be. It's not about waking up late or being your own boss and CEO. You actually have to find a problem in your community, find a solution for it, and then try to monetize it. That is what business is. That is what entrepreneurship is. If you are just doing this just because you think it looks cool or it sounds fancy when you've got CEO on your LinkedIn, I am so sorry. You are going to have a rude awakening because your foundation is already shaky. Lesson number two, ask yourself if you need to incorporate a company or if you can continue as a sole trader. So a lot of people rush into registering a company with the CIPC, so they end up getting a PTY LTD. And I won't lie, it does sound cool to say, oh, I have a business registered. But the issue with this is that having a company actually has so many administrative tasks that you need to do. For example, you have to do annual returns every single year. You need to submit your taxes. And even if your business isn't operating and it's dormant, there are still things that you need to do to remain compliant. So if you're just starting out and you're not sure this business is actually going to be something you do for a long time, maybe consider doing it as a sole trader or a sole proprietor. And if you are going to be doing this, you will probably have to convert into a provisional taxpayer. This means that you will actually self-declare to SARS because uh, when you work somewhere, you get your IP5 and your employer will, will hold the money. But if you have a business on the side, you are not paying any tax, so you have to declare. I know this might sound a bit confusing, but this is also where having a tax practitioner help you out is important because they can also help you weigh out the pros and cons of actually registering a company or doing it in your personal capacity. I think I took too long to register a company and then when I did, I also didn't really know what I needed to do, but I think I'm finally getting the hang of things, so I'm not complaining. Lesson number three, keep a great track of your business expenses and business income. This could be opening a separate bank account, just that all your business activity is separate from your personal things. And in keeping track of your business transactions, you will be able to understand some of the business seasons that you go through, so your cycles. So some businesses operate really well in summer and others really well in winter. For example, if you sell ice cream, you know that summer is a good time for you. But those who sell hot chocolate, 
thrive better in winter sometimes these cycles aren't very obvious to the naked eye and that's why keeping great track of your business's transactions is important so i know people who sell gadgets like cell phones and cameras they usually do make a lot of sales around december because people are buying christmas gifts um, and then people who are like influencers might also make a bit more money in like your january february months because a lot of companies are trying to create hype so it all does depend on the various industries so it's important for you to keep great track so you can identify your own businesses trends you'll also obviously get this the more you do it so experience will help you and it also helps you make sure that you are managing your cash flow and you're also managing your demand keeping great track of your businesses transactions will also help you come tax season to ensure that you are remaining compliant with SARS. And this is also important for some of your clients because some of them will require you to provide a certificate of good standing. And if you haven't been doing this and if you haven't been filing your returns, you might lose out on a client. So I want to vent a bit on this and speak about what I was doing in my business. So when I started out, I was trying to keep my expenses very minimal. So I was doing everything very manually and I was doing most of it because I feel like I don't have to pay myself much. And technically my business has been operating for the last four years. It's just that this is the first year where I was just doing it purely. I didn't have any other job. And I can definitely tell you that I am grateful that I did have those three years of just, you know, ironing out things because this year went a lot smoother than I thought. But having said this, one of my pitfalls, even in my first year of operating fully, is that I still kept my financial stuff quite manual. So I liked keeping everything in Excel sheets, but I'm also someone who likes writing. So I was also keeping it in like notebooks and I'd be like, okay, I made this much money and I spent this much and all of that in terms of my business. And this got really confusing because when it was tax season for my business, I had like five plus spreadsheets that I was working on and they were all different. And then there were also like some invoices and slips that I kept in an envelope. So I just had so much to work with and I felt like no man I, this is frustrating surely there's a better way and after much time and consideration I obviously started looking at different tools and when I thought of zero I've heard of zero but I always assumed it was gonna be super expensive because some of my older clients that I used to work on back when I was in corporate used zero so I just always assumed it was for like these big fancy companies but I'm here to tell you that Zero is for me and you because they do have packages that are specifically for small and medium sized entities. I have been using them and I'm actually really enjoying them. I highly recommend that you try it out too. There is a 30 day trial that you can use just to see if this is something you'll enjoy. And if you're happy, then you can continue with this. I will leave the link in my description box. But just to talk more about Zero, because it's more than just an accounting tool, you will appreciate this for your business because one, you're going to get a lot more time on your hands. When you go into business, you usually go in it because you want to do the core stuff. There's something fun, but then the admin and repetitive tasks, like, you know, manually invoicing people, tracking your business expenses that gets boring no one goes into business to do that so go digital to allow you to have more time on your hands to do what you actually want to do my second tip for you is prioritize cash flow management with zero you're able to see your cash inflows your cash outflows you're also able to budget so that you can kind of forecast what you're hoping to do in the month and then compare it to what actually happened and where there are differences you're able to reflect and see how you can improve or what adjustments are required knowing your cash flow also helps you set financial goals for the short term and the long term and this is important if you want to grow as a business and then lastly tax compliance this is a non-negotiable. If you don't want to be compliant for tax, then don't go into business because you will get burnt if you start playing with your tax. The benefits of being tax compliant, as well as the importance of staying up to date with the latest tax regulations and deadlines, helps small business owners remain compliant and avoid penalties. Being tax compliant can also work in your favor by helping small business owners access funding and growth opportunities using accounting software like Xero to automate tax calculations and generate accurate reports helps in reducing errors and ensuring compliance. Additionally, working with an accountant helps provide expert advice which helps you navigate the tax landscape and maximize your deductions and credits. Xero allows you to get accurate reports effortlessly Plus, you can try Xero with a 30-day free trial to see how it simplifies your tax management. If you want to try out Xero, do check out the link in my description box or you can go to xero.com slash za 
You can also try out Zero for 30 days for free so that if you're not enjoying it, you're actually able to cancel. But I'm telling you now, you guys are probably going to enjoy it the same way I am. Lesson number four, deliver great quality. So as your business grows, there will be a lot more demand. A lot more people are going to hear about you. But please remember to always ensure that you're delivering the best quality to your customer. Because the last thing you want is for someone to have a bad experience, write a terrible review, and now you lose everyone. If you have too much on your plate and you're unable to service everyone, rather tell people that I'm so sorry, I don't have capacity to actually deliver this for you. I'm happy to recommend someone else or we can push you out to another time. That way you're still ensuring that you are delivering quality to the people who you are able to service and you're also respecting people and their money. Okay. And then lesson number five and my final one, speak more about your product. I know as a business owner, it sometimes feels awkward when you talk about your business. You feel like people are getting annoyed. Nobody cares. But you are your business's first brand ambassador. So if you're not talking about it, no one will. Advertise as much as you can. And by advertising, I don't always mean you have to pay for it. It could be you talking about it. It could be you posting on your WhatsApp story. People are always watching. And whilst I am saying this, I'm going to self-plug myself. Make sure you are grabbing my book. I do have it on www.lomaku.co.za. But also, if you don't want to buy the book, you can continue by subscribing on my YouTube channel. And actually, please do subscribe. I know some of you watch the videos, but you don't subscribe. Subscribe! It's for free. And then to wrap this up, I do want to say that I am happy to be in business. I'm still happy with my business's performance and how I've done in the last year. I know I'd actually set a certain target uh, and I was like, okay, if I don't get this or if I don't reach this, maybe I must go back to corporate. And I've spoken to my dad about it as well because obviously he was a bit concerned because how do you just leave a stable job just to try something? But I think I'm quite happy with the results thus far. So I'm going to give it one more year and then we'll see again. We'll assess again after this year. Um, but I do have a very strong feeling that business will forever be in my blood. And even if I do go back to working, I think I still will do business. But you know what? I don't want to speak about plan B's right now. I'm happy. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Do not forget to check out Zero. The 30 day trial is for you. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you to Zero who have sponsored this video. Guys, if you like this content and if you like me speaking a bit more about business, please do drop me two blue hearts just so I can keep it coming. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, before I forget, I do not have all the answers. So if there's another business lesson or business tip that you believe was really great for you as a business owner or something that you believe other people should know about, please do drop it in the comments. You know, we're always learning from one another here. So I look forward to learning from you guys. And I will catch you. Ugh, that was my chair. <laughs> and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.